everyone welcome to the session in this session we shall study the concept of how a data collected can be represented in a histogram now histogram is a graphical representation of data in form of rectangles to show frequency of data items in successive intervals of equal size In a histogram, frequency and class intervals are represented in form of rectangles, and the successive class intervals are of equal size. Now, let us see how to form a histogram. But before that, we must understand method of grouping a data. Now consider the following data in which these numbers are given to us. Now we will group the data in intervals. For this, we will make a frequency distribution table for the given data, in which in the first column we will write the class intervals, and in the second column we will write the frequency of the particular class interval. Now here the numbers start from three and go on till forty-nine. So we take intervals of equal size ten, like zero to ten, ten to twenty, twenty to thirty, thirty to forty, and forty to fifty. Now there are upper and lower limits of these class intervals. That is, for the class interval zero to ten, the lower limit is zero and upper limit is ten, and so on. It means for the class interval zero to ten, the numbers greater than equal to zero and less than ten will be included. For the class interval ten to twenty, the numbers Greater than equal to ten and less than twenty will be included, and so on. Now, from the data, we will find the numbers which are lying in these intervals. First of all, let us see how many numbers are lying in the interval zero to ten. Now, here there is only one number which is lying. In the interval zero to ten, so the frequency of the interval zero to ten is one. Then there are four numbers lined in the interval ten to twenty, so the frequency of the class interval ten to twenty is four. So in the same way, we have completed the frequency distribution table. Now there is a point to remember, and that is, in some histograms, the intervals are taken as 0 to 9, 10 to 19, and so on. In these intervals, like in interval 0 to 9, the number 9 is included in the interval 0 to 9 only. And this type of grouping is done when integers are given only, as Integers cannot be like 9.4, 9.5, etc. And in case of real numbers, we take the intervals as 0 to 10, 10 to 20, and so on. And in these type of intervals, the numbers like 9.5, 9.6, etc. 
lie in this interval in which all the numbers greater than equal to 0 and less than 10 are included. Now let us discuss an example. Here, the following observations give the marks of students in class test. Here, the marks of 30 students are given to us. Now let us draw a histogram for this data. But before that, we will make frequency distribution table by the method of grouping the data. Now in this frequency distribution table, in the first column, we will write the class intervals, that is the marks. And in the second column, we will write the frequency of a particular class interval, that is the number of students. Now here, in the data, the least value is 72 and the maximum value is 99. So we will take an interval of size 5. So we have the intervals as 70 to 75, 75 to 80, 80 to 85, 85 to 90, 90 to 95, and 95 to 100. Now, there are two numbers lying in the interval 70 to 75, so the frequency for the class interval 70 to 75 is 2. Now there is only one number which is lying in the interval 75 to 80. So the frequency of the class interval 75 to 80 is 1. Now the number 80 will be included in the interval 80 to 85. So the frequency for the class interval 80 to 85 is 5 and in the same way we have completed this frequency distribution table for the given data. Now by using this frequency distribution table we will construct a histogram for this data. Now in the first step we have drawn the horizontal and vertical axis and here horizontal axis shows the marks of students and vertical axis shows the number of students. And now we will show the intervals from this frequency distribution table on the horizontal axis. So here we have shown the intervals on the horizontal axis and here you can see a pink or a zigzag curve near the origin which indicates that the scale along the horizontal axis does not start at the origin. Now on the vertical axis we will choose the scale of frequency. Here we have frequencies ranging from 1 to 10. So here we have taken the scale of 2 which is the appropriate difference between the numbers on the vertical axis. Here you can see that we have taken the numbers as 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 on the vertical axis. Now for each interval we will draw a bar whose height is given by its frequency. Now, for the class interval 70 to 75, the frequency is 2. So here, the first bar shows the class interval 70 to 75 with height of 2. Similarly, we will draw the bars for the other class intervals also. So here we have drawn the bars for each class interval. 
Here you can see the second bar shows the class interval 75 to 80 with height 1. Similarly, we have third bar at height of 5, fourth bar at height of 8, fifth bar at height of 10 and the sixth bar at height of 4. And this is the required histogram for the given data. Now from the histogram you can answer this question which says what percent of students got marks below 90? Now here the total number of students are the sum of the frequencies of all the intervals that is here the total number of students is equal to 2 plus 1 plus 5 plus 8 plus 10 plus 4 which is equal to 30. Also number of students below 90 marks are included in the intervals 70 to 75, 75 to 80, 80 to 85 and 85 to 90. So we will add the frequencies of these class intervals to get the number of students below 90 marks. So the number of students below 90 marks is equal to 16. So the required percentage is equal to number of students below 90 marks that is 16 upon total number of students that is 30 into 100 which is equal to 53.3%. Also you should note one point that there cannot be gap or distance between the intervals in a frequency table or between the corresponding bars in a histogram. And here the bars of the successive intervals are joined together even if there is no data for a given interval, as here you can see, for the interval 80 to 85, the frequency is 0. Then also, we have included this interval in the histogram, although the height of the bar of this interval is 0. So in this session, you have learned the concept of how to display numerical data in a histogram. And this completes our session. Hope you all have enjoyed the session.